I was born fast. Parisi made me faster. I thought I could jump. Parisi brought me to new heights. I wasn't always quick. Parisi made me lightning fast. Strength was never my strength. Parisi changed all that. Hawk Graphics Inc. in Randolph, New Jersey is a professional full-service printing company providing high-quality commercial printing services to customers throughout the United States since 1981. We provide custom printing with the newest state-of-the-art equipment. We help companies of all sizes deliver clear and consistent messages with printed materials that are crafted by our in-house team of graphic designers. We have a large team of talented, creative, and innovative experts to help businesses showcase their brand with our unique services. Hawk Graphics Inc.'s team of courteous professionals is here to help you with your next printing job. And now we also offer social distancing barriers, shields, signs, and floor decals for corporations, retailers, schools, or anyone else to help make employees, customers, and students feel safe from the spread of COVID-19 or other infections that spread easily. No matter how hard I worked, there was just this little bit of area of fat that I just wasn't happy with. My lower back, around my tummy, just places that no amount of exercise or diet were going to change. Couldn't do it on my own, and the cool sculpting procedure got me what I was looking for. Cool sculpting is a patented cooling technology that targets and kills fat cells with no surgery or downtime. Your clinician will work with you to develop a treatment plan personalized to your specific fat reduction goals. Each treatment lasts as little as 35 minutes. During treatment, your cool sculpting clinician will first attach the applicator. This non-invasive procedure freezes the fat away without harming the skin. After treatment, you can immediately return to your normal daily activities. The results from cool sculpting are undeniable, but now Dr. Nussbaum and his team are taking it a step further by offering custom medical weight loss with cool sculpting. The MyCool Diet program is the first of its kind. By pairing doctor supervised weight loss with cool sculpting technology, patients will lose the weight fast and keep it off even longer. Now's the time to see a slimmer you. Take the first step and get your cool sculpting consultation today. All-Stars, offering competitive cheerleading at the elite level. Our mission is to exemplify and encourage sportsmanship, athletic confidence, and commit to encouraging the dreams of our athletes to succeed on and off the mat. We focus on training our athletes throughout the year to compete at some of the most prestigious competitions, including NCA and the D2 Summit. While we focus on training our elite teams, we also offer many classes and privates to athletes who are looking to work on tumbling or stunting for their high school or rec cheerleading teams. As we head into our fourth season, we are looking forward to what is to come. Whether it's privates, classes, prep teams, or elite teams, we will strive to prove to our athletes that with determination and effort, the opportunities are infinite. Loja Cohen LLC is a law firm located in Chester, New Jersey. Although we are local, we provide legal services to businesses, entrepreneurs, governmental entities, and school boards statewide. We provide big firm quality work, but do so with a small firm feel and flexible pricing structure. Our specialties include employment law, labor relations, and commercial litigation. At Plosia Cohen, we are proud to support the local athletes in our community. And welcome to the Morris Sussex Sports Talk Show. I am your host, George Muha, and I am here at on June 30th, Tuesday, 2020. We are in the summer. And uh, you know what? I don't know if we're so much into 2019, 2020. More, we're more heading towards 2020, 2021. God willing, sports happens. Um, and uh, if this is your first time tuning in for any more Sussex Sports production, thank you so much for tuning in. And just so you know, Morris Sussex Sports is a 14-year-old media company that provides coverage of high school sports in Morris Sussex and parts of, parts of Warren County. We do all kinds of stuff. We do live, we do articles, special interest stories, 
uh, live podcasts like this, live play-by-play broadcasts with a play-by-play commentary and live instant replays and cool in-game graphics, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I don't know if you know this, but uh, we are a big supporter of the uh, special needs community. We have uh, quite a few special needs folks on our staff that help us between interns and um, employees. And we're very proud of that fact, something that I just thought we would throw out there so people know. Um, and we have a great internship program. So if you're a young person uh, or an old person trying to get into uh, do some cool stuff, reach out to us. We want you. Okay. And I'm excited about today's broadcast. We have uh, uh, a really special guest, Brian Bowers from uh, Del Barton. Del Barton's head football coach has been there for a plethora of years, 18 18 years maybe, um, has had a, a great career there, is the epitome of, of what Del Barton is all about. And uh, we're excited to have him to talk about it, the history, the future, what's cooking for 2020. We'll delve into all that stuff. We'll have a lot of fun talking to him. Um, so with that said, we're going to bring him on in a, just a few minutes. We're going to hear a word from our sponsor, and then we're going to kind of get back into, uh, into football. Um, and I also want to let you know, if you've been watching more Sussex Sports, you like more Sussex Sports, go support our sponsors. They're the ones who make what we do possible. And, um, you know, we have a lot of great businesses that support us and uh, they put a lot into supporting us. You know, that's how we make our that's how we make our money, frankly. And if you're a business out there and want to support high school sports, reach out, reach out to us. So we'll be right back after these messages from none other than the Orthopedic Institute of New Jersey. We'll be right back. Sports medicine is the care of athletes, college athletes, professional athletes, amateur athletes, and we see a lot of weekend warriors. At the Sports Medicine Center, we're up to date on all the latest techniques, both surgical and non-surgical treatment options for treating all sorts of injuries. It's important to make the diagnosis, make it quickly, and start the ball rolling with the treatment. If you can get an MRI done the same day of your injury, a lot of times that's gonna help get that treatment started in the right direction instead of waiting two, three weeks. I think reassurance, making the diagnosis, and coming up with a good plan for that particular athlete is a very good thing. It helps to get the folks back on track and limits how discouraged they can actually be from the injury. Patient education is important. We want the patient to be part of the treatment plan and having the patient have an understanding of what their injury is, what their treatment options are, that helps them to get back to the sport that they love. We have doctors with all different uh, specialties within sports medicine, state-of-the-art concussion care, regenerative medicine, and then of course we have our orthopedic surgeons. If something needs to be fixed, uh, we can fix it, more than likely in a minimally invasive uh, fashion. With the arthroscopic and minimally invasive procedures, we're able to do much of this surgery inside the joint without having to damage any of the surrounding tissue. It allows an athlete to return to sports much quicker. We're seeing an excellent result with regenerative medicine. Ligament injuries that would normally have taken six to eight weeks, now we're seeing two to three week recovery periods. It gives me great pleasure to be able to treat an athlete and see them succeed back on the field. Welcome back, and thank you for joining us for the Morris Sussex Sports Talk Show. And I'm here with uh, my football friend, Brian Bowers, head coach of Del Barton. Brian, thanks so much for tuning in, man. Hey, great to be here with you, George. Uh, I, I appreciate it. Thanks. Yep, uh, my, my pleasure. Great to have you, man. And uh, I, I know it's been kind of a crazy uh, couple months here. How's, how's uh, Del Barton football been uh, hanging in there? Uh, yeah, I, I think I think we've done well, to be honest, uh, as well as as we could have in this current situation. Um, I think we've uh, as a school, uh, we, we maybe were a little bit ahead of the curve in terms of some of the technology we had in place um, before this all started. You know, we had been been using a platform called Schoology for many years, and uh, I think it was really came out of a result of when Sandy hit and everyone was out of school for a week or two. Um, we did some investing and said, well, you know, if something like this ever happens again, we got to make sure, you know, we have our kids taken care of in terms of instruction and places to go. And so, at, you know, and 
we have uh, a, a remarkable faculty who just really worked hard to uh, do what they could to support our students. Shout out to one of my uh, staff members, Rob Flynn, who's in charge of our technology uh, in school. Uh, he did an amazing job making sure all the teachers and coaches and everyone was up to speed with doing things like this, right? Zoom, which I knew nothing about uh, as, as I would hear on a commercial and it, it would be meaningless to me. Uh, I don't know what we'd be doing without Zoom. Um, so don't you wish you had, don't you wish you made a smart investment like right before all this happened? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I wish I had a crystal ball for sure. But, um, you know, what, what I think we all realized was actually you can get a lot done, a lot accomplished with Zoom. Um, in terms of meetings, I can't tell you how many staff meetings, football staff uh, stuff we've been doing. We're probably as prepared, if not more prepared than we've ever have been, just because it's easy, you know, and you can be at home and take an hour and jump on and then, you know, you're back out um, fixing your shed or whatever else you're trying to do. And as a, as a, as a career football coach, having a little time to be at home and fix some things at home was, was much appreciated. So um, that all being said, can't wait to get back to with the kids. Can't wait to get back to coaching in person. Uh, there is no substitute for that. And I think we're all in this business because we love being around the kids and we love being around coaches and we love the game of football and we love the interaction. So um, we've done as best as we could do. Uh, we really want to move on now. Yeah, exactly. And I think you're right. One of the unsung heroes of all this is uh, the, the way the school administrators have kind of jumped in and the tech people and all that, and even the teachers too. Um, I think most schools really didn't skip a beat. Maybe some, maybe a week, they took a week break and kind of used that spring break. And <laughs> But, uh, you know, we have high school kids too, and they, we adjusted pretty quick. And I was, I was impressed. So, uh, you know, big kudos. And that's cool to know that, uh, you know, it's funny, some of these things that you do early on, like for Sandy or something, you kind of create a little thing. And then, uh, uh, you know, it's been pretty remarkable how the school has adjusted. Um, so, so, Brian, I want to kind of get into things. I'm just curious from, I, this is such a fluid thing from day to day as far as, you know, what is, is fall sports going to happen? Is football going to happen? Um, from your perspective, are you going to, I know they announced that, that July 13th is a time when you can kind of cook up and start practicing. Is that still in place? I mean, are you guys ready to start then? Yeah, yes, absolutely. We are ready to start on July 13th. Um, you know, we've worked hard at having all the contingencies that the state laid out uh, and, and we'll be ready to go with all that. Um, you know, in terms of the social distancing and, you know, coaching on the field, I'm, I'm sure it's going to get, uh, it's going to, uh, take some getting used to, but um, I know uh, we will do anything to get back on the field. And I think we've done, you know, I think we're going to be ready to go. Like I, I know we can be a safe environment and um, you know, uh, the kids are dying to get back on the field with each other. Uh, we've been doing some things, you know, our workouts via zoom and you know, even that it's not in person, but, you know, for them to have small groups and that camaraderie of what uh, high school football is, you know, it's, it's coming out. And I think when they, when we're able to get out a, a, on July 13, it, it, it we're going to be good to go. And so um, I'm sure it's going to take a little getting used to, but, you know, we have our plans and we just got to execute the plan. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. Um and, you know, Brian, one of the things we, we funny, we, we, we started this talk show. We're in week, I don't know, 13, 14 of doing this talk show because, you know, we do live broadcasts and all that. And when this went down, we're like, all right, let's try to adjust our sale. Um, and we started, we're like, we'll create a little talk show. We'll talk about all this, we'll talk to all the spring coaches, spring players. But that kind of had sailed there. We're kind of focused on football um, and, and the fall sports. So coming into the fall, I mean, you're losing uh, – some key guys, I mean, uh, some big – but you have this junior class that's been uh, – everybody's been kind of eyeing since they've been like sophomores. So I'd imagine you guys feel pretty good about the fall. Yeah, I mean, we, we do. To be honest, we, we do. And, and I'm not, you know, usually the coach to 
you know, to, to our horn. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think we, we have an unusual large number. We had 25 returning seniors, which is the biggest number that, that maybe I've ever had since as a head coach, 25 uh, kids staying with the program since freshman year is, is, is quite an accomplishment. So um, a lot of these guys have had playing time uh, many last year. Uh, I, 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 even a handful of sophomores and even uh, a, a freshman or two. So kids who have really caught up, uh, been playing a lot of Del Barton varsity football. And uh, we're really excited to, uh, to get the year going because I think we do have that experience in the key positions. Uh, and then we got a lot of, I feel like we got some good young guns out there too, waiting to make it happen. So um, yeah, we just, we want the opportunity. Yeah. And w- one of the biggest things that I was so <laughs> upset, I, I, you know, we had your, uh, we had your big uh, uh, tight end, Luke Unger, wait in the ring. And I, I knew, I saw that, I knew that kid when he was in, uh, uh, you know, the Pee Wee level and he gets to high school, uh, plays, has a great, I think sophomore year was looking like, oh, this kid's going to be great. Gets uh, an early commit to Stanford, gets injured for his whole, practically his whole junior year. And then again, for his whole senior year. Um, how bad did that stink from your perspective? <laughs> it, it, it still stings. It, it really does. It stings uh, just because he's such a great young man. He's just a great kid. He, uh, you know, he's got a lot of athletic talents. We know that. Um, he's one of those guys as a freshman, you know, all it took was to see him, you know, walk in the gym and say, hey, dude, you're going to play varsity football. OK. And he's like, oh, OK. Uh, but we knew we knew him. His brother played for us. Great kid. He ended up going down to Georgetown and, and played down there. Um, and then Lucas, um, you know, right from the freshman, we saw his athletic talents, um, got on the field a little bit as a freshman. And then uh, sophomore year, he, you know, was one of the best tight ends in New Jersey. I think he caught like 40 passes and eight or nine touchdowns and showed the toughness that he could block, you know, uh, defensive ends that were, you know, a lot probably more physical uh, and more developed at that stage. But, you know, he wasn't afraid and, you know, I think uh, had garnered a lot of attention coming out of his sophomore year for, for a good reason. And, um, you know, came into the junior year, uh, I think the first game of the year, he caught like 10 passes, a touchdown, and he just happened to, um, when he caught the touchdown pass, he landed on his arm in kind of a weird way. And uh, it turns out that it was, it was a broken bone in one of the small bo- bones in his wrist. And uh, it was the kind of thing where, you know, it's not like you just slap on a cast and expect it to heal as you play. It just was, um, it, it was one of those bones that really had to heal or else it would affect other things. So anyways, mm-hmm. He, uh, he really kind of lost the entire season, was able to come back that last game in the playoffs and did well. Um, ended up playing, uh, you know, uh, basketball. He was a three-sport athlete, and that, that's maybe the, part, the best part of the kid was, you know, he just is a competitor. He loves to compete, loves, doesn't matter what sport. Played basketball, did, did real well as a junior, um, and then was playing lacrosse and was getting a lot of playing time on our, you know, outstanding lacrosse team. And he just happened to turn on the turf uh, or make a move on the turf. And, you know, it was, it was the ACL. So um, they did a phenomenal job in reconstructing it. And, you know, he is, he's going to go to Stanford. And I think he's actually leaving this week. Um, And he's going to be, you know, I think he's going to be better than ever from a physical standpoint. Um, But just a heartbreaking because he loved the team and he was a great teammate. Uh, he ended up, you know, I think in a lot of ways growing um, uh, in, in other ways as a player and, and as a mentor for some of our younger guys. And um, he'll be missed. Um, we really are excited to follow him and his talents at Stanford. He's got a great opportunity, and I know he's ready to, to make it happen. So, you know, it, it is what it is. Life works in, in strange ways. And um, I think uh, in, in a lot of ways, this is going to make him stronger down the road. And uh, he clearly uh, had still a great Del Barton experience, but um, you know, I, that's that's that, you know. And but he's going to go on to do great things, and I know, and I know, and I'm excited to follow him. 
Brian, what does that say to, uh, about Stanford that they kind of hung with him? I mean, they, he really didn't have much of a high school career besides that sophomore year, more or less, you know, and then he has an ACL. Um, does, it, does that say more about Stanford, more about Luke? What, what, is, what do you say about yeah, that? I, I think a little bit of both. I think, um, I think when Stanford, when he committed to Stanford, he was legit one of the top tight end recruits in the country. He had 30 plus 30 offers, um, you know, ACC, ACC, SEC, Big Ten, Pac-10. I mean, Rutgers, uh, you know, locally, some BC, you know, just he was he was offered in, in many, many places. So, um, you know, I, yeah, he had really hard luck his junior and senior year. But I think Stanford also knows that in today's era of surgeries and uh, how things go, he's going to be fine physically. And uh, they, they had some experience. A coach had told me something about, you know, there was a kid who got drafted last year with a very serious injury, very similar to Lucas's uh, when he was a high school fresh, uh, a high school senior. So, um, but I will say they didn't flinch. Uh, the coach, actually, the, his recruiting coach, his position coach happened to be at the game where, uh, where Lucas got hurt playing lacrosse. And, you know, before he left, he just turned to me and he said, well, oh, just just so you know, Lucas is fine. Whatever this injury is, we're not we're, we're solid on supporting him. And so that was great for me to hear. That was great for Lucas to hear and his parents to hear and just kind of solidified what we always thought about Stanford, um, mm -hmm. the class of, of the class in terms of uh, a, a school and, and how they run their athletic department. So. Um, but I think they know they're getting a great player, and uh, and 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 I think it's I think it's more going to pay off for them. And uh, Brian, talk about great players. You have uh, Will M Murray gets drafted to the NFL. Uh, you know, coming out of William and Mary, what was that like? Uh, when I mean, did you see that coming when he was an a, a high school athlete? Yeah, we used to joke a lot. Um, here's a kid who, literally, as a freshman, I, I would see by the bus loop and kind of gangly kid and red hair kid. And I'd start talking to him. I'm like, Hey, how's it going? He's like, good. I said, Hey, you know, he's like, I'm not playing much. You know, I'm, I'm, I kind of like being on the team, but I'm not very good. And I'm like, well, I'll just stay with it. You know, we'll see what happens. You know, next year he comes out and uh, you know, we, we recognized immediately. He was still a little bit gangly, but he had tremendous athletic ability. And we, as coaches, we said, well, let's get this kid in the weight room and keep working him." And by the junior year, uh, he was a beast. And by his senior year, he was an absolute terror beast. And um, he's a kid that just never stopped working. He's a kid that loves football. Uh, he's a kid that, um, you know, enjoys going out to practice. And, you know, when you love the practice and when you love the camaraderie and you love the grind, and as his college coach said to me, um, coach, he's never lost a sprint. You know, at the end of practice, you get the, the, the guys on the line and they, they sprint off, the linemen are together, and maybe the skill guys. Bill Murray in his five years at William & Mary never, never lost a sprint among his uh, defensive line colleagues, you know, or, or peers. And so I think you put all those things together and you got something special. I remember at the time, uh, you know, I, I kind of I felt like he was getting missed by maybe some of the Power 5 schools. Um, but then in a way, I kind of felt like it was a good thing because he had time to develop in his own way at William and Mary. And uh, he ended up being an all American at William and Mary. Not, not that he couldn't, I think he would have been a great player wherever he went, but um, there's, there's something to be said about being in a division where, you know, you're not going to be uh, one of uh, you know, whatever uh, 20 defensive linemen right off the bat but you're going in and you can have a, ch a chance to play earlier and develop and gain that confidence. But um, he ended up actually wasn't drafted, but it ended up being a good thing because oh, right. he ended up being uh, really one of the most highly sought after free agents. And, um, you know, the Patriots really had shown a lot of interest and he kind of, they kind of tipped their hand and said, Hey, you know, if, if you're there, we're going to go right after you. And, so he actually got a contract, a two-year free agent contract, which is, is like the Mercedes of free agent contracts. And he fits right in with the Patriots' uh, defensive scheme. You know, Coach Belichick called him on draft night and 
talk to him for a half an hour. And so, you know, it's, it's one of those like dream stories. And um, I, I think the kid's going to do a phenomenal job and I, and I, you know, I think he's going to make it and I think he's going to make a name for himself. Obviously it's a big hill to climb. You're talking about the new England Patriots uh, in, in professional football, but he's got all the stuff and, and number one, he's got the stuff right here. Um, just his heart, his desire. Uh, he's just been, he was a pleasure to follow pleasure to coach and wish him all the best. Yeah. And I, I heard that, um, the Patriots, well, I guess the NFL in general liked him because he was getting in, getting in on special teams, getting his hands on kicks and punts and stuff like that. Um, am I, is that is that the rumor that was going around? Is that was what the, the, the NFL teams really liked about him? Yeah, I mean, you know, for, I think his his film showed very well just as a defensive lineman. But but you make a great point. Here's a guy as a defensive tackle, he blocked ten kicks in his career. Think about that as a defensive tackle where you are right there, uh, you know, in the interior against 300 pound guys, he was able to get through and block 10 kicks at, which is remarkable. When you think about it, it was a record uh, at his level. And, um, you know, I, you could just see Bill Belichick sitting in some hole watching film saying, <laughs> Hey, who's this, you know, uh, you know, one double a guy, who no one can block and he's blocking 10 kicks, you know? So, you know, I think Bill Belichick is Bill Belichick for a reason. I think he he acknowledges and appreciates what makes a player great. And mm. if you have the tenacity to block extra points and block field goals and block punts um, as a defensive tackle, I think you got something special there. So, yeah, I think that's a great point. Special teams, it just shows that this kid never takes a playoff, uh, which is, you know, we always preach um, – and especially on the special teams, you can make a huge difference. So I wouldn't be surprised if immediately right off the bat, he makes his name as a special teams player for the Patriots. Yeah, that'd be fun. Um, and, you know, so special teamers, they can last a long time. Uh, you know, that uh, we actually we had David Tyree on a couple, couple weeks ago. He's, he's a local guy. He's, he's opening a little store in Morristown. So we had him on. And, um, you know, he was an all pro as a, or he made the pro ball as a special teamer. And, those guys last a long time. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you know, if you, if you can be a great special teamer, you're an asset. And, um, you know, I know, I know the Patriots are the Patriots because they excel in, in special teams. So, um, yeah, to be able to, you know, it's a dream, you know, it, it really is a dream, especially if you don't go to one of those power five programs to have an opportunity in the NFL. Um, and I think he, he knows that and he, you know, he got his education and he um, he's well set up for life. If, you know, whenever football does end, but um, I know this, he's going to give it his best shot and uh, it's going to be fun to watch. So, so Brian, could we, you know, I, I, I know I was getting preparing for this and every time I talk to you, I, I always, uh, you know, you've been around a while and it's funny because uh you know, to me, you're still a young guy. And uh, I think you and I are probably around the same age. And, you know, you've been at this at Del Barton. Are you going into your 18th year, if I'm, I'm not mistaken, as a head coach? Uh, yeah, I'm going into my 17th year as a head coach. Okay. And then you were on staff yeah. for a couple of years prior yeah. to that. Six, a six year, I was on staff with John Kowalik, who was the head coach before me, for six years. So I'm going into my, uh, my 23rd year at Del Barton School. So... <laughs> Um, very excited about that. And you're a teacher as well, correct? Yeah. 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 I'm a, a you know, teacher, coach, uh, assistant athletic director and at whatever other hats that I've had over the years, which, uh, you know, at a school like Del Barton, you wear many hats and you do many things. And I've been blessed to be at Del Barton. It's a great place to be great people. Awesome place to have a career. So, um, mm. you know, I feel very lucky. And Brian, where did you grow up? Where did you play high school football? Yeah, I'm a Long Islander. I grew up in uh, the south shore of Long Island, a uh, town called West Islip, West mm -hmm. Islip Lions. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, had a, had a great upbringing um, there. And I graduated. Uh, I went to Union College up in Schenectady, in New York. Mm -hmm. played, was able to, fortunate enough, play Division Three football great program up there. Um, and then I got into college coaching for five years. 
-hmm. And I coached at uh, Stony Brook out in Long Island for two, went to the University of Pennsylvania for two, and then went to Williams College for a year. And then uh, was fortunate enough to make my way uh, to Del Barton. So, um, you know, I think you get to a point when you go pursue the college career, um, you know, you start asking some questions about, you know, it, it's, I love the football part of it, the recruiting part of it and um, the travel and things that, you know, you, you're going to have to commit to, to really have that career. And I felt like if I could ever end up at a place where, um, you know, I could teach and coach and be in a great community, then probably that was my ultimate. And then, you know, the Del Barton situation opened up. So I, I really feel like, uh, like I was blessed to be able to come here. Yeah. I mean, how did that connection happen? I mean, you grew up in Long Island and I know, I, I know people in Long Island. If you're on Long Island, you think they think New Jersey's like Ohio, right? Um, <laughs> so you, you go to school out there, you go up there. How do you connect to, to Del Barton in Morris County, New Jersey from that, from that path? Did you know somebody or? Yeah. So you're right. You grew up on Long Island. You're, you're in, we call it the box. You, you, it's, hard, <laughs> it's hard to get out of the box, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, what I knew about, all I knew was that stupid, you know, New Jersey, what exit comment that, you know, uh, I used to throw at all my Jersey friends. But um, so the, the common denominator was was John Kowalik. Uh, he mm -hmm. was the head coach at the time. And in my years coaching in college, uh, especially at the University of Pennsylvania and uh, and at Williams, we had a number of um, guys from Del Barton. So I, I was, I was recruiting Del Barton. So I knew, I knew I had a connection with John Kowalik. And, um, when I made that transition, uh, JK, as we called them, was, was able to, uh, figure something out and offer me a position. And, and, uh, you know, 23 years later, I'm still here. They haven't figured out a way to get rid of me. So, uh, <laughs> I, I've been fortunate, um, to, you know, to be able to be at a place where, uh, you know, I think you're given a lot of freedom uh, to do your teaching and coaching, um, but a lot of guidance also. And uh, it's a place that just values and appreciates excellence. And uh, I, it, it inspires me every day, to be honest. Mm. And uh, Brian, can you talk a little bit about the, you know, the Barton, those I, I love going to the Barton. First of all, you walk on that campus and you're just like, this is a beautiful place. Like I could be, I'd be fine going to school here. It doesn't even seem like a school. You know, it seems like it's should be in the middle of Connecticut in the mountains somewhere. And it's this little respite. Um, but the, you know, there just seems to be a high standard of character kind of kids that are always on your team. You know, they're always a pleasure to, to talk to and stuff like that. And I know there's a high standard of uh, academics and uh, it doesn't seem like it's easy to be a, a, a kid, um, you know, in that school. You have to do well in school. You have to have a high moral character. Um, you know, you gotta you gotta play on the team too. So, uh, what do you say about the kind of you know the kind of kids that are coming out of Del Barton? Yeah, I mean, I think it's all of that. I think it's you know, it starts with the leadership. It starts with uh, I think it starts with the mission of of the school. Uh, it starts with our monastic community really setting that foundation of what um, education should be. Um, I think, you know, we, we are a program that we've, we've tried to really live the mission of the school. And when you can be in complete sync with the mission of the school uh, and be supported by the school, you know, football becomes, I think, easy, you know. And so, you know, the three, the three tier mission of Del Barton to build character, to pursue excellence and to develop leadership. You know, those aren't just words like that's a big part. It was really what our program is all about. We try to model those things every day. And so um, character, excellence, leadership, um, fitting football in with that mission uh, and, and teaching the mission and, and really modeling it as best that we can for our young men, uh, I think, uh, what the product of that and, and the, the parenting and the support uh, really, it just uh, it ends up being a great, a great recipe for developing young men of character who, who, Oh, by the way, we've had many, many outstanding athletes and football players as well. So, um, you know, I think that's it. I think, I think we're, you know, we're, we're, we are, we are a school 
that has a strong mission that ha that also happens to have a very strong football team. You know, we're not a football factory. You know, we don't aspire to be. We we, we are a school first that has a lot of um, support and um, love of our athletic program and our football program. And and I'm blessed to be part of that tradition. Um. And, and Brian, like through the years, through your, you know, 17 years there, you know, a lot has changed schedule wise. So for years, you were kind of you guys were playing a lot of the Morris County uh, publics and such. And then, you know, kind of the grad, you know, for the regular season games and rig. And now it seems like you're kind of facing the other the big Bergens and some of those teams. And, you know, from your perspective, do you like to play like the local teams or do you like to go out after those big the big Bergens out there? You know, um, do you not care? What, what, what do you say about that? Yeah, I mean, it's a good point. I mean, in my 23 years at Del Barton, we've, we, we've gone, this is probably our fifth conference. I st we started, when I started in 1997, we were in this conference called the Northern Hills Conference, was this kind of a bizarre uh, mix of, you know, Morris County and Sussex and, and Essex and Passaic. And it was just, it was a little bit scattered. I couldn't really figure it out. And, you know, we had a lot of success and, and then we went to the, what was the skyline division of that, which was a little bit more of a suburban situation. Uh, and then in 2009, I believe, or eight or nine, uh, we went into um, the NJAC, which was uh, the conference that really was all the, the bigger Morris County, uh, what at the time, what I felt like was the Morris County football powers, you know, the Morristown and Roxbury Randolph and Westmore Central and Mendham and uh, Mount Olive. And yeah, and we loved that. And I loved that. I thought that was great. We, all our games were local. All our games were, I mean, I think it was like 15 minutes was the furthest we had to go for a game. I thought there was a lot of, um, you know, a lot of rivalries, a lot of camaraderie. Um, you know, we had our success and, and without doubt, um, we were proud of our success during those, those years. Um, but then the landscape changed in New Jersey, especially in Northern Jersey. Um, and, uh, you know, we kind of got lumped into, uh, when they created this, you know, super football conference, um, we got lumped in with, uh, the non, what was used to be called the parochials. Now it's called the non-publics and, uh, and, you know, th that took a while to transition. Um, you know, I, I, I think right now we feel, we feel good about it. Uh, we, are, we are competitive and getting more and more competitive. And, uh, you know, to be honest, I think like any new challenge, you know, you got you to gotta grow into it. And I think uh, from a competitive standpoint, we, we are doing that. We're growing into it. And uh, you know, we love playing the best, you know, uh, you, you come to Dell Barton because we are about pursuing excellence. And so, you know, we are, we are doing that and, uh, really excited about what our future looks like. To be honest, we have a great senior class. We got great junior, we got, we got really well-balanced classes and the incoming freshmen, very excited about that. So, um, yeah, that, it's different. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's exciting and it's a very high level of football. Uh, I think you'd be hard pressed to find, you know, many schools that are, have as competitive a schedule as we do. Uh, we were able to play two out of state c competitors. We play St. Anthony's, which is the powerhouse on Long Island. Uh, mm -hmm. and we play the Landon school, which is a, a very strong program down in Maryland. So, uh, I love it. I love our schedule. You know, again, like I said, we've, you grow into everything and I think we've grown into it. Um, and I think we're ready to really, um, to, uh, establish, establish ourselves in, in, in this conference as, uh, as one of really the top contenders every year. That's our goal. Uh, Brian, how, how do you get those? How do you arrange those, those, those schedules? Like you, you, you get the, uh, the Landon school and, um, and the school out in, uh, Brooklyn, um, or Long Island. How, how do you, uh, how do you get those? And they seem like they're good competitors for you guys. I, you know, I've, I've gotten to look forward to those, those teams just cause they seem like they seem their schools like Del Barton, but how do you find those rivals? Yeah. I mean, I, I think what you mentioned is, is really what it's all about. We, we like to play schools that share our mission. 
that share our philosophy and, you know, and have like-minded programs. And so, you know, I think uh, Landon School is that and St. Anthony's is that. Brooklyn Poly Prep is, we've played them over the years. Um, and so, you know, look, we're out, I'm about in coaching clinics and I have many friends in different states. And it's just one of those things where we get two spots every year to pick up non-conference games. Mm. And so it, it's fun to go out of state and have that um, out of state. Not that we always have, we can, we've played in-state non-conference games as well. Um, but uh, it, it does add a nice element to it. And again, we want to play teams that are, that are good people. You know, we want to play good teams, uh, teams that are, uh, you know, doing it the right way, not looking to cut corners. You know, obviously in the state of New Jersey, there's a whole set of restrictions of what you can and cannot do to um, track student athletes. And we're always going to do it the right way. And uh, mm-hmm. we want to play people who have that same, um, that ethical background and, and who want to compete and do it the right way at the highest level. And, and so uh, if you are that, give me a call. <laughs> uh, and Brian, you have, uh, you know, these, is your schedule pretty much the same as it was last year or are you picking up some different teams? Uh, yeah. Last year we played, uh, which was great. We went down and played um, uh, Woodrow Wilson high school down in Camden. They were an outstanding team and we had a really good game with them. We, had, we ended up lost the game, unfortunately, but uh, it was a really fun game and it was back and forth. Um, but we weren't able to work them back in our schedule this year. Um, but we were, we were other than, um, so, and we were given another two different, uh, we're, we're in the super football conference, um, white division. We're, we're going to go up and play, uh, two from the a little bit higher division. We're going to play St. Joe's Montville and we're going to play Paramus Catholic, um, as well. And so our conference is Seton Hall prep, Del Barton, DePaul Catholic and Pope John. So those four schools are our little mini conference, which is kind of crazy. There's only four schools in that mini con. We wish there were more, but that's just the way they broke it down. Uh, and then we play up um, St. Joe's and Paramus Catholic um, next year. And so, you know, that, that rotates and, you know, again, we're excited to play those schools and uh, it, I think it's a very competitive uh, balance. We play um, Morristown High School and we play Clifton High School as well. And so, um, you know, we feel like it's a, it's a really good balance schedule. Yeah. Um, and that's fun. I always love that Morristown Del Barton rivalry. You know, you're both in the same town kind of thing. Is that, is that fun for you as well? I, it's the epic battle for Suvio's Pizza. I mean, <laughs> you know, it, it's what it is, it's what it always has been, it's what it always will be. So, uh, if you want to go and get a slice at, Suvio is at, you know, three o'clock on a Wednesday afternoon or Saturday night at seven, you better have won that game. So <laughs> that's simple as that. Ah, that's great. And I loved it a couple of years ago when, um, you know, they had uh, you guys arranged with Morristown for, with uh, Kevin Heisebaum, you know, took that, took that run up the middle for uh, 70, 80 yards. That was a really cool moment. Um, I thought that was uh, probably one of the highlights of, that I've seen in a long time. That was really cool. It was, that was special. And that was all coach powers at, at Morristown. He's, he's a phenomenal guy and I'd do anything for him and support him and his team and his program. And he, he would have done it for us. And um, you know, just great people over there. The more I'm part of the Morristown community. Um, you know, I've, I've lived in uh, you know, Morris Plains for uh, you know, 20 years. So uh, it's a special place. It's special town it's special community special high school and um you know and i've had great relationships with with all the coaches there going back to coach porcelli coach hall coach powers they have really really good people there and and we're happy to play that game and and have that um that in town rivalry feel mm. uh brian can you talk a little bit about the 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 morris county coaches you know fraternity association it's just it seems so unique, and I always feel like until I started doing this, I didn't I didn't realize that how tight knit all of the local coaches are. And I've seen you there, and you're you know you're talking to uh, like I you know I went to Hanover Park way back in the day. Not that I mean my high school career was very forgettable, but 
but I thought our head coach hated all our rivals, you know, <laughs> um, and maybe he did at the time. I don't know, but you know, it just, it's just so funny watching these coaches just be, they're almost best friends, you know, all these opposing coaches and they're all uh, freely giving information about schemes and things. And um, can you talk a little bit about that too? Like, was it, were you surprised when you kind of came to this area and found that, that kind of fraternity? Yeah. I, I don't know if I was surprised, but it was a, a it was it was great to see as a young coach when you'd go and i remember we used to have these uh fifth quarter dinners back in the day it would be like some night in may where you'd go and 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 really get to enjoy each other and relax and have kind of a banquet but just uh really get to meet a lot of guys and i think i think to be honest it's it has a lot to do with just uh the leadership and the people who are involved um you know, Jerry Gallagher, who I'm blessed to have on my staff. And I know, you know, Jerry, well, uh, you know, Jerry is the kind of guy that would give you the shirt off his back. Um, if you, if you needed it and maybe even if you didn't need it, you know? And so, um, you know, I remember being a young coach and, you know, he'd be so, he just made you feel so comfortable being part of that organization, um, that, you know, when you're part of it, you want to give back and you want to contribute and you want to make it as strong as you can. So, yeah, I do feel like it is unique. Uh, I think many coaches who don't have that in different in different counties, uh, you know, they probably don't know what they don't have. And and but us in Morris County in the Greater Morris County area, we we know what we have. And uh, again, I go back to that. Uh, you know, you hear stories of these legendary coaches, Bill Regan at Del Barton, and you know, uh, you know, John Sharona and and. and Piccarello and Bauer and, you know, the stories go on and on about these guys. And I feel like, um, you know, guys like, you know, Cosmo and Jerry Gallagher and, you know, Kevin at West Morris. I mean, everyone kind of just does their part um, to make it what we can make it. And so, yeah, I, I, it is, it's awesome being part of it. What is that like from a coaching perspective? I'm always curious. Like it's, I see these guys are buddies, they're buddies, you know, they're, they're so tight. And then uh, what happens like that week you got to play each other? Do you guys kind of go silent on the phones and stuff like that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. There, there's, there's, you know, you're, we have a good time, but there, there's great. These, all, all of those coach, all the coaches are, are tremendous competitors. And so, um, you know, I, I think that, you know, professional, but you do anything to win those games, but after the game you shake hands and, you look each other in the eye and say, Hey, great job. And we'll see you in December or January or whenever for, for the next meeting. So um, look, it, you, you, you coach in this game long enough, you, you're going to, you're going to win some and you're going to lose some and, and you, you need to, you, you hopefully have learned how to win graciously and lose with dignity. And that that's why, you know, if you can't model that as a head coach, and I think it's great for our players to see that camaraderie, um, as you mentioned, I think it's, you know, it's great for our players to see that because they understand that, you know, the relationships and the respect for the game and the respect for other people and the respect for other players and other coaches. That's what this game is all about. It's not just, you know, doing anything you can to win that game on Friday night or Saturday afternoon. That's part of it too. But then to make it worth it, what it, what it is worth is you have to show that graciousness and, um, and be a, and be a, um, a good, uh, a good sport, win, lose, or draw. Hmm. Yeah. The w one thing that also impressed me that, you know, it seemed like in recent years, and I don't know how much anymore, but, uh, but this, you know, I guess the numbers in football have been, you know, dwindling with concussions and all that. And those meetings, I could tell there's just this vibe of like, we need to protect this together, <laughs> protect this great sport. And, uh, you know, that's a big part of what you guys are, you know, doing and talking about. And uh, again, I think it's really cool for the, maybe the casual parent that doesn't really know what goes into being a coach that, that all these coaches are like really working hard behind the scenes to only protect the sport, you know, and they all are seem to be really rooting for each other. Uh, I guess the, ex except the weeks of playing each other. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, no uh, doubt. Do you have any buddies? Do you hang out with, uh, you know, do you kind of uh, connect with uh, some guys more than others, like, you, you know, on a regular basis from that group? 
Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm friendly with them all. I mean, with uh, but to be honest, I, you know, I don't know about the other coaches. I mean, the job as a head coach is is so demanding in in a lot of ways. Um, you know, if I'm not working on football at school or doing something in in the community or out, you know, around here with regards to, um, with regards to that, I'm, I'm probably with my family and, uh, going to a soccer game or a cross game. I have three daughters and that keeps me and my wife busy enough. So, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there probably will be another time in my life when, when, uh, some of those things, um, are, 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 or not around for me anymore. Uh, but for now that's, that's pretty much my focus. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so Brian, man, I appreciate you coming on and just giving us a little insight about, uh, Del Barton football. And, uh, you know, we've been talking to a lot of the coaches and, and I was like, I gotta have Brian on there. We haven't, uh, we haven't touched on, uh, on what you guys are doing there. And it's just, it's just a special place, man. You, you drive on that campus and, um you know it's just a beautiful place and again your your kids are always complete gentlemen and a pleasure to talk to i love just talking with those kids and uh, they're they're always a good bunch there over there yeah thanks you know we say a lot it's uh as as beautiful a place that it is and it really is i mean especially i hadn't been back there in a, in a couple of weeks just because of covid and got back recently and setting some things up and getting back in the office and working on some things like the campus just it, it's special you know it is it is just vis- viscerally beautiful when you get on campus but you know the larger thing is is it, it's it's the people that make it really special you know there's just good humble um hard working roll up your sleeve let's get to work people um i think sometimes people have the wrong idea of what del barton is you know they you see the you know the the beautiful campus and um you know you wonder you know the price tag of what it costs and all those kinds of things. But, um, you know, it, it, it's, the, it's the people, it's the parents, it's the kids, it's the teachers. It's the, a lot of people who just really work hard to make it what it is. So um, I, I humbly thank you for that. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited for this season coming ahead. And uh, anytime, you know, you, you ever need me, you can reach out. So Brian, one more thing, man. I just want one more touch on this upcoming season. Cause I feel like, like you said, you got 25, 26 seniors coming back. Some of those kids are stud. I love that kid called Freeman. This looks like he's uh, he kind of reminds me a little of uh, Brett Farvish, you know, it just seems like he's having fun out there and, you know, he shows up at the uh, Morris County co- uh, coaches, got the bow tie on. I'm like, I like this kid. He's got some character. Um, what do you say about that kid from a, you know, leadership and talent standpoint? Yeah, no, you you hit you hit the the nail on the head. He's he's a great kid. He's he's a spirited young man. He just loves to play the game. You know, you you can't be around him and not feel that. Uh, he gives everything he has every day. He's got high, very high standards for himself, and uh, quite frankly, he's got high standards for for the guys around him. And so, um, you know, he's he's gonna be a three year. Um, quarterback which three-year starting quarterback which is remarkable it doesn't happen very often and so um he's done great things for us in, in his first two years and we're really excited about his senior year uh and look when you have a returning s- senior with two years under his belt if you just think about like where that puts you from an offensive perspective way di- way different than uh than um if you're coming in with a, a quarterback that, you know, has taken his first snap. So just that confidence, that competitive level, you know, we feel like we're starting in a different place with him at the helm. And, um, you know, we really, we truly feel like we can compete with anyone in the state of New Jersey this year. So Brian, when you have a kid like that, you know, who's been with that experience, is it almost like having a, almost like another coach on the field only because he's he maybe knows the playbook more. Or he knows what you guys are thinking. Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, I think that the position of quarterback is that anyway, I think you, if you play quarterback, you need to know what all 11 guys on the field are doing at all times. And so it does take like a mental and a, and a uh, interest in the game component that, that Cole has. Um, and I think Cole has, you know, learned, uh, I think he's, I think he's learned in his first two years, you know, what it takes. And uh, now he's not, 
sort of that young buck anymore, but now he's a little bit of the elder statesman. And uh, I think he's going to have that demeanor on the field. Um, and he's got to learn that too. You know, I think, um, you know, there's a time for that raw energy and there's a time for a pat in the back and there's a time for, um, you know, uh, you know, just steadying the ship. And I think Cole knows how to do all those things. So, yeah, we love coaching him and, you know, he's surely going to be one of the top quarterbacks in New Jersey this year. Oh yeah, definitely. But he's not the only, I mean, you have that group of skill guys too, that have been, a lot of them have been playing since sophomore year too. What do you say about that? Yeah, no, we're, you're not wrong. And (laughs) I, I, you know, we're, we have a great senior class. You know, we have guys who have played a lot of varsity football up to this point, you know, um, you know, Gary Lewis, Gary Lewis has been a four, you can be a four year varsity football player. Again, I, I can't, I, I can't count on two hands how many four year varsity football players that have, that we've had in my 23 years. So it's, it's a very small number. Gary's special and just a great young man and great athlete. And uh, he's going to have a great season. I mean, as many Jake Jamarlowich, uh, he'll be certainly one of the top defensive backs in the state. Um, along there with them az lewis az broke into the scene last year as a as a great defensive back for us um you know and there's there's our our linebacking core you know nicholas and martini and um you know uh i could go on i mean with you know <laughs> defensive line we got uh elijah hills who's coming back who had you know a great Oh, that last kid, year that and uh, a monster. yeah he is he is he's, <laughs> he's a phenomenal player so um and, and and i left some kids out but you know like we 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 feel like we have a great mix and um we're excited to to write this story and you know we're 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 praying that we have the opportunity just quite frankly and then uh you know and and i just think that there, there's going to be a lot of guys even though we have some experience there's also a lot of seniors coming back who, who really haven't gotten that chance yet nor who have earned that chance mm. and there's a lot of younger kids who who are fighting for opportunities as well so um yeah we're, we're to say we're excited would be an understatement <laughs> that's great um well i'm looking forward to it. and i always you know i always feel like it's us against the world i mean from a media standpoint we cover our area you know and it seems like all the other media cut companies cover the uh the big bergen for non-publics and whatnot so i love it if we can give them a little run <laughs> uh, uh, yeah I, I would love it too <laughs> <laughs> and you're our only chance you know what i mean <laughs> uh, you and pope john so uh yeah. anyhow brian man great to see you thanks so much for uh spending some time with us and uh you know we look forward to getting out there hopefully hopefully soon thanks george yeah we we do too and and i i just think that we have a lot of a lot of good people working on a plan to make new to make football happen uh, in New Jersey this fall. Um, you know, obviously there's a bigger picture, and you know things need to go right. And God bless, you know, um, you know that we don't, you know, we don't get struck with a, another major setback in terms of you know all the COVID things. And uh, but you know it. it we need to control what we can control and, and what we can control is just going out and being as prepared as we possibly can be. So that's, that's our focus. So kind of keeps it clean and easy. And if it doesn't go that way, then, then it doesn't, but it's not because we're not going to be ready to go. So um, thanks. Thanks for your support. Thanks for your show. Yeah. Thanks for uh, the coverage that you give Morris County. Um, it's really excellent. And uh, I know our kids and our families appreciate it. So thanks for what you do too. No, I appreciate that. Well, thanks Brian. All right. Well, best luck to you, your family, the, the Dalbarton family. Hope everyone stays healthy and well, and uh, we'll we'll see you soon. Thanks, George. Much appreciated, bud. All right. Yeah, we'll let you go. See so, uh, big uh, big thanks to to Coach Bowers for coming on, letting us uh, learn a little bit about what's going on under the hood at Dalbarton. Um, you know, they've it does seem like they have a lot of pieces getting ready in place to do something special. I felt like. You know, these big, big um, parochials from around the state in northern New Jersey seem to be uh, have kind of taken it to the next level. And Del Barton, to their credit, they stuck to their guns and 
you know, as far as their academic standards and character standards, but, and that, but it seems like they're, I think they can compete this year with those, those group. I feel just as confident as, as and I'm glad your coach Gal, uh, Bowers feels the same way. So that's going to be fun. So listen, we appreciate you coming on, sticking with us, listening to us. And um, we're going to, we'll see you again tomorrow. So take care, everybody. I struggled with weight my whole life. I had the gastric sleeve done. I lost a total of 100 pounds. I'm actually healthier. No more diabetes. No more hypertensive. I would definitely recommend Dr. Nesbaum. Your weight may not be your fault. It could be a metabolic or hormonal problem. To learn more, come in for a free seminar. Go to NussbaumMedicalCenters.com or call 973-998-9833 to schedule a consultation today. Paulson here at Tread Connection Randolph in the heart of Morris County in northern New Jersey. We are a mobile wheel and tire service that comes to your home, work, or job site as needed. You can stay safe in quarantine. No need to have any interaction with us um, to perform your tire service as needed. As a special promotion right now, if you get tire service from us, we will give you a $10 gift card to the local business of your choice. Please give us a call and schedule your service today. Thank you. My name is Stephanie Sulios, and I'm part of the County College of Morris admissions team. Even though we are not currently on campus, the admissions department wants you to know that we are still available to answer your questions about CCM and assist you through the application and registration process. Whether you're looking to enroll in a summer class or enroll in a degree program for the fall, we're here to help you take the next step. You can reach us by email at admis at ccm.edu or call us at 973-328-5100. We hope to hear from you soon.